Very, very disappointing card. Should have been Mitchell versus Evloev, but oh well, we've got Tapuria versus Mitchell instead. That's better, but this card is dreadful. So starting off with Jake Hadley. Yes, I know this fight isn't first, but I want to talk about this one. Jake Hadley versus Carlos Candelario. Candelario fought Tatsuro Tyra. And he fought him on his debut and he put a good account of himself in that fight because he was stopping the takedowns in the early stages of the round. He's quite balanced. He was getting outworked on the feet and in the wrestling. But at one point, he ended up being in like half guard or top mount, finishing off the round stronger. But he lost the round and I think he lost this fight maybe... 3027 because Tatsuro Tyra is a very good prospect and Carlos Candelario didn't make himself look very bad in this fight. All it was is that Tatsuro Tyra was just levels above him and he's fighting Jake Hadley and I believe this will be a very good fight because Jake Hadley, I believe he was on Dana White's contender series as well. I don't know if Carlos Candelario was, I think he was, but in this fight I am going with Jake Hadley and the reason I'll say I'll go with Jake Hadley is this might end up being a boxing fight on the feet. Because you've got Carlos Candelero, someone with very good takedown defense. Jake Hadley, someone with very good takedowns. But then you look at his last fight before Alan Nascimento. And the reason he lost that fight is the weight. He's good on the regional scene, Alan Nascimento. And he's bigger than him walking weight. So what he was able to do is when it came to getting to scrambles on the ground, he would outmuscle him and strengthen him on the ground. Like laying his full guard and strike him. And just lie down in his guard. And like maybe posture up sometimes. But... Jake Hadley couldn't really do much because of the weight. If they were both similar weights, I think Jake Hadley could have won that fight because it was all about weight because he just got out grappled and he couldn't move. And then when it came up to the feet, he looked quite good, but then he'd get taken down to the ground again. But usually he's known for his jiu-jitsu and his submissions. He's only got like two TKOs on his records. But Carlos Candero has never been submitted or KO'd. He usually goes to a decision. And bearing in mind this is a three-round fight, it could be a standard battle where it's a close, maybe split decision for Jake Hadley. Or he lies down in his guard and controls him. But I don't know if he can do that. Because like I said before, Carlos Candelero has got good takedown defense. And he's quite good at wrestling. But it's just Tatsuro Tyra is just a different fighter compared to him. Next, we will go to Grant Dawson versus Marco Madsen. And I think this is one of the underrated fights in the card. You could put this on like a UFC 281 or 282 card. And it would be good. You've got Grant Dawson, 18-1. and 1, Marco Madsen, 12th and 0, the Olympian. Apparently, I don't know too much about him when it comes to his Olympian record. But Grant Dawson, I'm going with to win this fight. Marco Madsen's about 38 years old. Grant Dawson's probably about 28, 30. And Grant Dawson's a wrestler. Marco Madsen can wrestle, but he's more of a boxer on the feet who will like back you up against the cage and then like work you in the clinch. A bit like what Roman Delize does. But I've got a feeling Grant Dawson will take this fight because it's going to be three rounds and he's got more submissions than Marco Madsen. Marco Madsen does have a lot of decision wins, but that's just because he fights three rounds all the time and it's always a stand-up battle. And against Grant Dawson, he will not be able to outmuscle him in the clinch. And I wanted Marco Madsen to fight someone like Paddy Pimblett. That would have been more exciting, but oh well. But Grant Dawson, stronger than him, I would say when it comes to boxing, you might argue Marco Madsen might have the striking edge. Because when you think of Grant Dawson, you don't think of knockouts. But he can box. He's quite fluid with his hands. But what he likes to do is, he did this in the Contender Series. He likes to pressure you with kicks, get you against the cage, then come up with a few punches, like a cross or like a jab, and then use that jab to set up like a double leg takedown or shoot for your legs and then take you down to the ground and end up in like side control. And from there... He'll try and pass your guard and get into like top mount and try and strike you from there or look for a submission. But the majority of the time, he wants to go for a rear naked choke submission. When you look at his record, most of his finishes have been rear naked chokes. He's had one KO and that was on Leonardo Santos. And that's the guy who somehow knocked out Kevin Lee, despite him being a jujitsu guy, as Michael Chiesa said. And his only loss came back in 2016, where he was TKO'd 35 seconds into round one. But that was years ago, so we don't need to talk about that. Marco Madsen, undefeated. So you could say, a good argument to say Marco Madsen could win by decision. But I think Grant Dawson might get a submission, especially as Marco Madsen likes to fight in the clinch. Because if he fights in the clinch, and you've got someone like Grant Dawson, he could do what Charles Oliveira does. It's like, from the clinch, like transition to your back against the cage, but hold him against the cage, and then time it. 
to the point where he can jump on his back, like backpack him and get like a body triangle on his back and then try and lock in a rear naked choke like we saw Dustin Poirier do to Charles Oliveira. I'm telling you, Grant Dawson is winning this fight and I think it will be by rear naked choke. And he's got very good cardio as well. So you could say it might be in round three or it could be a decision win because he might just out wrestle him on the ground. And he beat Nadni Romani. And if you don't know who that is, that's another guy who beat Paddy Pimblett. So I'm going with him. Next, we have Tagia Yulebedekov. I don't know how to pronounce the name. He's the guy who fought Tim Elliott last. And a lot of people thought he was going to win because you've got to remember, this Tagia Yulebedekov, he fought Alan Nascimento. But it was a split decision. So a lot of people disagreed on that fight. But nonetheless, to beat someone like Nascimento at flyweight is very impressive. Like I said, he's good on the regional scene. He would have had the weight advantage over Tagia Yulebedekov. Even though I don't know what he walks around weight, but I don't think he's as big as Nascimento just by looking at him after his cut, or if he does a weight cut, I don't know. But looking at him, you can just see Alan Nascimento is bigger. And he was able to beat him via split decision. That's why I'm saying that's a very good win to have on your record, because Jake Hadley couldn't. And remember, Tagia Yulebedekov, he's a wrestler who has got submissions as well. He's not too much of a striker. He's got like one TKO slash KO on his record. But he was able to wrestle the guy who I believe is bigger than him usually. That just shows you how strong he really is. But then you look back at that Tim Elliott fight and see that in this fight, I think just Tim Elliott just outboxed him on the feet. And he's got good takedown defense because remember, Tim Elliott can wrestle. But I remember he was throwing loads of body kicks and he was landing a few punches to his head. And he just won via unanimous decision. This was a clear decision. But a lot of people would have went with Tagir Yulian Bekov because he just beat Nascimento and he's fighting Tim Elliott, who at that time was on a one-fight losing streak. But he did lose to a guy called Mateus Nicola, who's Brazilian, and he's very good. And he's about to fight Matt Chanel, so that's not a bad loss. So beating Tagir Yulian Bekov is very good. And then we go to Nathan Maness, another fighter who's very balanced. He can wrestle, he can strike. He got a rear naked choke over Luke Sanders. He TKO'd his opponent before Umar Nurmagomedov. I just sounded like Joe Rogan then. And remember, no one really wants to fight Umar Nurmagomedov because he's too dominant. He can do everything. He's balanced. His submissions and his wrestling is so underrated. Well, it might not be underrated, but it is so good. And he's clearing out this division. And I'm telling you, in a few years' time, I would not be surprised if he's the bantamweight champion. He's got a very high chance. He's only 26 years old. And he's steamrolling everyone. But his striking has improved as well. He's got underrated striking. Yes, he's only got one KO slash TKO. But if you actually look at the strikes he throws, I couldn't believe it. I think he landed on Nathan Maness like this sidekick right to his face and he ate it. So Nathan Maness has got a chin or it might have been Brian Kelleher. But from what I can remember, he threw a brutal kick right on his face and he just ate it. So knowing that he's got a chin as well and he's a balanced fighter... Yes, I said I'm going with Yulia Tabekov, but Nathan Maness has a very good chance of winning this because, again, he'll look the better striker in this fight. And we saw Tagia Yulembekov, when he fights the better striker, he loses. But he's only lost twice, so that's not a bad thing. But I've got a feeling he might go in here. And despite Nathan Maness never being submitted, and if you don't get submitted by Umar Nurmagomedov, that's very impressive. So if Tagir can get the job done by submitting him, I'd be very surprised, but... I'm going with him to win via decision. We have Chase Sherman against Josh Parisian. I don't know how to pronounce that name. This is a very good fight. Very underrated in my opinion. Heavyweight. This will end in a finish. There will be no submission in this type of fight. Sherman, 15 KO slash TKOs. Josh Parisian, 11 KO slash TKOs. And I'm going with Chase Sherman. I know that's very risky. A lot of people are going to go with Josh Parisian. They're around a similar age. Both knockout artists, but Chase Sherman is quite a bottler. But then you look at the opponents he fought in his last four. He lost to Alexander Romanov, not a bad loss because he's very good. Jake Collier, not bad either. Parker Porter, debatable if you want to call that bad. Andre Arveloski, he was on a good run at that point, I believe. I might be wrong. But I just think people just don't like Chase Sherman. And he did beat Jad Vendere. He did a better job than Waldo Cortez Acosta did. But Josh Parrison's got a better chance in most people's opinion. He's probably going in that the favourite. But I think Chase Sherman's got underrated boxing. 
and it's heavyweight, so anyone could get knocked out. It could go either way. And you look at the losses on his record, he doesn't really get knocked out. The last time he got knocked out was back in 2018, four years ago, against Augusto Sakai. So it might say he's got four TKO slash KO losses, but you look at the opponents who are doing it, I know Sakai isn't too good. But at one point, the people who KO'd him were doing well. And he hasn't got the best of wins on his record, but I'm telling you, I've got a good feeling that he's going to be Josh Perazian. And again, he's been a bit active, but he hasn't taken too much damage in these fights. A lot of these fights have ended in the first round in 2022 by submissions. That's not bad. If he was getting battered and getting KO'd in these fights, I'd be like, yeah, Josh Perizian is going to have a very good chance. So he's getting more experience in the UFC now. I wouldn't say a veteran, but Josh Perizian, he's only fought once this year. And to be fair, it was in June and he TKO'd him in the second round. So it's a 50-50 fight in my opinion because it's a heavyweight. And he lost to Dante Mays back in 2021. But apart from that, it could go either way. Yes, yeah, so I'm going with Chase Sherman to win this fight. And I'm going by KO in the second round. Now we have the co-main event of this. I hope it doesn't get cancelled. Neil Magny versus Daniel Rodriguez. I'm going with Daniel Rodriguez to win this fight. A lot of people don't like him because the Li Jing Liang fight was a robbery. Li Jing Liang should have won that fight. But Neil Magny is a veteran now. He's 35 years old, 26 and 9. You look at his record, look at the names he's beaten. Yeah, he lost to Shavkat. He beat Max Griffin, split decision. That was arguable. You could say Max Griffin won that fight. He beat Jeff Neal. I don't know how he did that. Robbie Lawler, Li Jing Liang, Carlos Condit, Johnny Hendricks, Hector Lombard, Kelvin Gastelum, Tim Means. You hear all those names I've mentioned and you're like, how did he beat them? But he's a good wrestler. His striking's also good as well. But you think of him as someone who who can box effectively, especially using his jab and then going for a takedown. But we saw against Shavkat Rachmanov, but that's someone else, I'm sorry. He just got bullied in that fight, if I'm honest, and then just got guillotined in the second round. But Daniel Rodriguez, you look at his record. Not counting Li Jing Liang, he beat Kevin Lee, he beat Mike Perry, Dwight Grant. A lot of people might not think that's good, but he is quite good when it comes to boxing. No longer in the UFC. Gabriel Green, he's got a chin on him. Tim Means, and it feels like he's been inactive, but I don't think he has. And to be honest, he's more active than you'd think. He fought three times in 2020. No, four times in 2020. I don't know how he managed to pull that off. It's like he fought every month. He's only lost coming to Nicholas Dalby, and again, that's not a bad loss either. And again, Daniel Rodriguez has never been TKO'd or submitted. This is another 50-50 fight in my opinion. It could go either way, but I'm just thinking Daniel Rodriguez is more balanced than Jeff Neal. 8 KO slash TKOs, 4 submissions, 5 decisions. You look at Neil Magny. Yeah, he's been in the company for longer. 7 KO slash TKOs, 3 submissions, 16 decisions. That's too many. And it will be 3 rounds, but I do think Daniel Rodriguez stands with more of a flat-footed stance, whereas Neil Magny is going to want to look to move more. But the thing about Daniel Rodriguez is what I'm going to say here is he punches harder than Neil Magny. You can see that in the Li Jing Liang fight. He throws wild hooks for a start. But Li Jing Liang had very good head movement in that fight. But if one of them connected hard, he could have put Li Jing Liang out. So if that's Neil Magny, I don't see him KOing him. But I do see Daniel Rodriguez beating Neil Magny by decision. Even though Neil Magny wins pretty much every fight by decision. And then we go to the boring main event. Some people might say it's quite exciting. But again, I don't really watch women's MMA too much and that's not misogynistic I just don't watch it only at the top level and this will be an all right fight in my opinion Amanda Lemos Marina Rodriguez I'm going with Amanda Lemos in this fight a lot of people are going to go with Marina Rodriguez because when you look at Marina Rodriguez's record you see that she beat Yao Zhen Nan Mackenzie Dern Michelle Watterson Amanda Ribas she lost to Carla Esparza Drew with Cynthia Cavillo Beat Tisha Torres. There's some good wins on that record. And then you look at Amanda Lemos. 12-2. and two. Beat Michelle Watterson Gomez. Lost to Jessica Andrade to some weird arm triangle standing choke. But Marina Rodriguez won't be able to do that to her. Angela Hill split decision. Still won the fight. But there's not too many big names when you look at her record. She lost to Leslie Smith. who's was about 40 years old. I don't know how she managed that. I really don't. But a lot of her fights end in the first or second round. 
But because these two are very highly skilled, I'm going to say this might go to a decision. Because usually when you have two big women fighters, a lot of the time women fights go to a decision. But there's outliers to the rule like we saw with Joanna Jacek against Li Yang. I can't remember how to pronounce the name. But the thing is, the reason you might go with Marina Rodriguez is we don't know what Amanda Lemos's cardio is like when it gets to the fifth round. Like, we've seen her go to three rounds a few times. But again, I said it ends in the first or second round. Marina Rodriguez is like a veteran because she's beaten all these big names. And a lot of them have gone to five rounds. Well, two of them have. And a lot of them have gone to three rounds. And some go into two rounds, like the Amanda Ribas fight where she TKO'd her. So I know already she's got good cardio. And Amanda Lemos has a lot of power in her hands. And when she's swinging wildly like she does to catch people, someone like Marina Rodriguez is probably going to eat these punches. She's never been TKO'd or KO'd in her career or submitted. Amanda Lemos has in the past. And her only loss came to Carla Esparza. And again, it was a split decision. So that had controversy over it. But I don't know how she's got two draws on her record either. So I think we might see in the later stages... If Amanda Lemos doesn't get it done in the first three rounds, I think Marina Rodriguez will take advantage of the cardio and then start putting the pace on her, like pressuring her against the cage and like landing a load of jabs and then following up with some crosses and backing Lemos against the cage. And if she's too tired to fight back, we might see her TKO Amanda Lemos. But again, I said I'm going with Amanda Lemos because I believe her power is very good. And you don't see that in women's MMA a lot. You don't see people getting loads of knockouts. Like We saw it with Molly McCann. But again, this is at straw weight. I think Molly McCann's at either bantamweight. I might be wrong. I don't really watch too much women's MMA. So I can't remember what division she's at. Very hard fight. And it might be an entertaining one. Due to the styles of both of these fighters. And I rarely say this about these type of fights. But I think this might be interesting. So that's it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.